Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to cover, or this, in this video rather, we're going to cover um, a software development process, single process, um, that you may wish to use for developing an open source Java library and then deploying it. So this will be slightly different for the type of product that you're developing. So if your product is a server app, then the process is going to be different and the process is going to be different also for the client app if you're developing one, especially in the packaging and deployment area. Uh, so just a heads up, I'm not going to cover um, all the tools that are out there. I'm only going to cover a very specific subset of tools that I find useful and simple. So this list is not going to be comprehensive. Right. Uh, and I'm also going to use FXGL as the example library that, say, we're building, since it has, well, it uses most of these tools. So for the ID, um, you can use, for starters, BlueJ. If you've never done any Java programming, or any kind of programming, really, BlueJ is very simple to use and creates this really nice learning environment. There's also NetBeans, Eclipse. Um, I've been using Eclipse for a while um, since, and then I switched to IntelliJ. Once you switch to IntelliJ, I don't know if um, there are many reasons to go back to Eclipse, but you know, it's really up to you, whichever you prefer. Source control management is Git and GitHub is what I typically use. Git is the tool and Git, the GitHub um, server is, well, it's the server. And here's the GitHub repository for FXGL. It contains your basic readme file and some stuff about how to build. Uh, GitHub also has its own issue tracker. Um, you can do pull requests and it has wiki if, in case you want to publish tutorials and also the releases page which we'll get to. In terms of dependency management you may wish to use Maven or Gradle so that um, other people will know how to build your code. With Maven you end up with this palm.xml file. With Gradle you have a different file called build.gradle and it centrally specifies the dependencies your project has and how to build your project. And there are a few other things that it does, such as testing. So you may um, want to integrate testing in there as well. Um, using the external JUnit library, which is basically a must have. And then Hamcrest is the um, extra library you can add to slightly change the syntax of JUnit. So instead of doing um, asserts provided by JUnit, you can do assert that, and then um, assert that X is Y. So you get this kind of more natural language syntax into your testing. Then we have continuous integration using Travis platform. So here it is. You log in using your GitHub account, you enable the repository, and then it just works. Oh yeah, you also need the .travis.yml file in your repository. From then on, it just picks up your latest commit, it runs all the scripts that you specify, it will pick up the build file, build your project, test it, so here are the tests and then run any other scripts as necessary, such as code coverage, or static code analysis, or deployment even. Uh, there's also Jenkins that people from the industry use. So if you already know how to use Jenkins, you don't have to switch to Travis and also the other way around, I suppose. For code coverage, you have codecov.io. So here is, again, you'll log in with your GitHub account. It gets the latest info from Travis. And 
you can see how much of your code is covered by the tests. So you kind of know um, areas that you want to improve by just looking at those percentage values. Then you've got uh, static analysis from Codacy. I'm not sure how useful it is. Um, I've only enabled it to kind of just play around with it. I haven't used it for anything that particular kind of useful. It does give you um, some indication of where your code is not as good, I suppose. But I don't know how useful the um, comments are. So saying like avoid really long classes. Um, if you're an experienced programmer, then you kind of know that already. But again, if you're starting, um, I don't know, have a look around. See if you're a beginner in Java, see if it's really helpful. And if it is, then I might start introducing that um, in the lectures. For packaging, you have, well, if you're developing a library, and I've used that as an example for this video, so we are developing a library, then .jar is the standard. So you just package your product as a .jar file, possibly using Maven, which is actually very useful. There is a Maven plugin, which is called, um, well, I actually just specified here, I think. Oh yeah, that's the you know, overall Palm packaging. But if you go further, there is a um, jar one. Yeah, there you go, packaging jar. And then you just, on the command line, say maven package, and it builds your code and spits out a .jar file, which you can then distribute. And the distribution, you for distribution, you can use either GitHub releases, so the old school Uber jar style, like here, you create a release, you add some change log notes, you upload the Uber jar, and that's it. If you want to go the kind of automated deployment Maven Central style, and this is where Maven and Greedle will pick up the dependencies from, so this is the central Maven repository, then you need to create an account on Sonotype, I think, uh, and then you ask for permission to upload. You get permission, and then you can start uploading your repository, your um, kind of built packaged products to Maven Central. Well, you technically upload to Sonotype, which then gets uh, the repository gets synchronized with Maven Central. And what else? Uh, we also have GitHub pages, so automated page generation for your uh, repository on GitHub, which again is really nice. You enable this in settings of the repository. Finally, there is javadoc.io, which automatically picks up your code um, from Maven Central. So you can see how all of this is linked. You start from the GitHub repository, uh, you put your code in there, you upload, you push your commits. These automatically get picked up by the continuous integration server, which builds your code, tests it, runs any scripts, um, such as pushing to CodeCov, which checks your coverage, another script to push it uh, to static analysis, which does your analysis and then analysis of your code. Then um, once you've committed your codes, your automated page generation does this. Finally, you can even do deployments. So you can automatically deploy from the Travis build server once everything is passed, such as tests, builds. It goes here uh, from here, the Java doc um, documentation, again, picks it up automatically, generates this 
beautiful web page documentation for your code that you can use to then um, share with the developers they might want to use your library. And if you can automate something, you should probably do it because chances are in the next project you'll end up doing something similar, if not the same. Right, so in this quick video we've covered um, very simple to use tools and hopefully this video has made you aware of what tools out there, what tools exist out there. This is um, not by any means any comprehensive list, so it's for you to do your research into, say, continuous integration and see what platforms um, are out there for you to use. And especially if you're in the industry or working in a team, then you'll have slightly different tools. Right, so that's what we've covered in the context of an open source Java library um, such as FXGL. And don't forget to vote on the content of the next video. The link will be uh, in the description. I'll also put all of those links, all the links to those tools, platforms um, in the description so you can play around with them. And thanks for watching.